to um, any other aspect of your course material. If there is any question, I want to receive questions and then we can tackle them together. Because the problem I'm having is that most of you, if I give uh, problems, you don't solve them. Uh, some of you uh, have not, uh, you don't read the course material, you don't come with problems. So what I've done is that I script those things myself and come and present them in class. All right, so once again, you are welcome back to your PHY 101, Elementary Magnetic and Properties of Matter. Let me remind us of what we did last time. I'm going to share um, this with you. Let me share this screen with you now. I'm going to open, let me open plenty of these so that I um, can use any one of them I want. Give me a minute. Let me um, share the board with you. Share the screen a big part with you. Awesome. Okay, so um, in the last class, what do I share now? Let me share the Zoom board. Give me a minute, let me share, share the Zoom board. Okay, now in the last class, um, this is what we did. Um, what we did was that we said that the rate the Q by the T, that's the rate at which heat is propagated through a conductor is directly proportional to the change in temperature and inversely proportional to the length, directly proportional to the um, cross-sectional area. So those are the things. I hope you recall that. Let me, let me, um, write this properly let me yeah let let it be like that so you have that this is the rate i could have written this as delta q if you like by delta t that is the change delta q is changing the heat that is the amount of heat that is being moved from place to place and delta t is the change in time i'm saying this is directly proportional to the cross-sectional area and the change in temperature and um, inversely proportional to the length. I tried to explain this, you know, using um, the motion of a car through a road that has potholes and the road is narrow. Now, if the road is narrow and has a lot of potholes, a lot of energy will be expended 
and time will be spent to pass through that road. Okay? But if the road is wide, if the road is wide, even though we have potholes, um, it, it, it will be easier, a little easier, if, um, or a little easy to pass through the road. Okay? Because, guys, in other words, what I'm saying is that it will be easy to meander through the potholes and still be able to do the journey in relatively shorter time. We also know that if the road is very long, then we will need, you know, more time and we also need uh, more energy to cover the distance. So you can see that all that I'm trying to explain there is covered in this, that the rate at which one moves, that is the speed, if you like. I am I'm not talking about this one now. This, I'm talking about the speed of a car, for instance, will be directly, that is, if all things are equal, the wider the road, the, 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 the greater the speed that one should be able to apply. Okay? Is it not for a journey? Okay? So that is what I'm saying. So, but in this case, I drew something. Let me let me um share um another board entirely. Let me share another one. Um a new zoom board. I don't know if I can, I want to add a new one. Let me see, just a minute. So um, if I have a situation like this, um, here is what I'm trying to explain. If I have um, a situation like this, so this is a conductor, and then we have positive ionic cores like that, and in between, we have electrons like this, electrons Okay, all over like that. And I told us why it should be like that. I said that in conductors, the atoms are close enough, they are so close that the outermost electron shells overlap. And therefore, the electrons in those shells are mixed up. So they form a kind of sea of electrons. Okay, and these electrons that are um, in this kind of sea, wonder about endlessly that they undergo some certain level of thermal motion, okay? And of course, we know that the higher the temperature, of course, the greater will be the average velocities of those electrons. So now these electrons are free to wander through the whole volume of the material as I have drawn there. But there is no net flow of those electrons in any direction, okay? That is what I tried to explain. So you now notice that when we hit, when we hit this material now, if it is added to this material like that, okay? Now these electrons will um, now move faster, isn't it? Now they will, they will move faster and so the thermal motion will increase.
Okay, I'm very sorry that um the thing went off altogether, so I had to change the uh, the um uh, network that I'm using. Can you all hear me? Can you hear me, please? Okay, I think I've muted everyone. Can you hear yeah, me now? We can hear you now. We can hear you, sir. Yeah, yeah the, the, the whole thing went off. Uh, so I, I, I have to change the network. So please let us get back to what we're discussing. Okay. Now, um... Here is what I was trying to describe. We said that um, in I I gave us a, a blueprint of um what what um really happens um at the atomic. Okay, we'll get back to you. I'm in the class. Yeah, is the guy that is calling. And the ICT man. You know, I, I. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I'm. Uh, yes, I'm recording tomorrow. What time is that? I think it's nine. Okay, so now that let's take that as a model of a crystal structure in a two-dimensional um, plane. Um, in the last class, I actually showed us um, a three-dimensional, I think um, I showed us a three-dimensional uh, structure of this that is called the crystal structure. I think I still have it here. Let me, let me share that with you. Um, so what, what really happens is this, is that... Um, when um, an object is seated, now you notice that this is vibrating this way and that way, this one is vibrating this way, that way, and so on. So all these are vibrating up, down, left, right, you know, in, out, like that. So now when heat is added to this, heat is added to this. Now these atoms here on this left side, will pick up this heat and therefore they gain more energy and then they will oscillate with amplitude that's with wider amplitude you know as they as they gain more energy the amplitude of oscillation will increase all right become larger like that so the tendency is that they will now be able to collide they will collide with the neighboring ones so this one can collide with this this one to this this one to this then the heat energy that was acquired by this is transferred to this through these successive collisions, and then the heat is propagated from this left to this right side. I don't know if that makes sense. Do you understand what I'm trying to explain? So I'm saying that in solids such as metals, heat is propagated through the object by successive collision of atoms. Okay, without the atoms moving away from the mean rest position. So in other words, the atoms do not undergo any net translational motion. This is what I explained. Okay, so that is one model of it. I don't know if there is any question on that. Is there any question on that? Do you have any question on that? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Can you hear you? Do you understand what I'm explaining there? No, sir. What yes, don't you understand? This is a repetition of what I've said. I've just drawn something to give you an idea. And I have explained this before. What don't you understand? Or you think this uh, uh, you think this is um, a secondary school classroom that we say a thing and repeat? I'm not supposed to come here and repeat. You are supposed uh, to have read this. Uh, what don't you understand? Well, the summary. Let me let me let me let me um show you the summary of what I've just uh, discussed with you. 
there is a summary. The summary of what I've just said is this. In studies such as metals, all transfer of heat from place to place occurs by the process of conduction. Okay? You already know that. So now, the conduction occurs through successive collision. That's all I want you to know. Successive collision of the atoms without translation from the mean rest position. That's all I've said there. Okay? So, so one atom oscillates like that, this way. And when it is heated, it, its amplitude of oscillation increases. I have already shown it here. So if there is a neighboring atom that was far away, as the amplitude increases, eventually this will be able to knock this. And then this will gain uh, that energy and then vibrate with larger amplitude and eventually knocks another one. So the heat added at one end is subsequently transferred through successive collision from one side to the other. That is the idea there. So that's all I wanted you to note. Now, that is one um, explanation. Another explanation is the one that I've given earlier on. Okay? And, and, and that one is something like this. Let me see if I can add another whiteboard. A new whiteboard. All right, the next one that I want you to see is this. So suppose I have the same diagram that I drew earlier on, and this time around I have these atoms here. Now these atoms have electrons in the orbits, as you can see. So these atoms are sitting at the lattice sites, like that, in a regular repetitive arrangement called the lattice structure. All right, so I'm just trying to give a rough uh, picture of that. Now, you know that the atom will have the proton here, that is the positive charges here and the electrons here in the orbits, okay? Now, if we have a closed packing, that is if the electrons are too close as they are in metals, then there is a possibility that these atom here, atom one here and atom two, all right, may have the shells overlap. So the electrons in this one and the electrons in this one will get mixed up. So these electrons will now form free electrons, all right? A distribution, which I called a C. Now I'm just coining this to explain it. So but what I'm talking about is a distribution of free electrons like that. So the whole matrix of this structure, is it clear there? So if this heat is added here, these electrons which are in thermal motion will gain the energy and transport the heat from this side to this side. So that's what we are also trying to take a look at. So that is why you will notice that any material that is a good conductor of heat is also a good conductor of electricity. Okay, all right. So, but in this case, since this does not form part of a circuit, it doesn't really form part of a circuit. So what? it has actually transferred, these free electrons have transferred, is the thermal energy from one side to the other, not necessarily, not necessarily electrical energy, because for there to be electrical um, energy, that's the flow of electric current, there has to be what we call the potential difference across 
this material across the ends of this material. Okay? So what I'm saying here, just to emphasize this point, is that a good conductor of heat is also a good conductor of electricity. An example are metals. All right. So that is what I want us um, to recall. Those are the things that I did last time. So today we want to solve a problem based on the concepts that we have learned. And after that, um, um, we can pause to take some questions from you on any matter at all. All right. Now look at it. We said that the rate at which heat is transferred, the rate at which heat is transferred, delta Q by delta T like that, is directly proportional to the cross-sectional area of the material times the change in temperature all over the length, suggesting that the rate, this rate, is inversely proportional to the length and directly proportional to the cross-sectional area and um, also directly proportional to the change in temperature. So if we introduce a constant of proportionality, we should write this as delta Q over delta T is equal to a constant K times A times delta T over L, like that. Okay? So this is what you have in the course material. Now, if, we, if um, delta T tends to zero, um, if we allow delta T to um, become very small, then we can write this as, we can write this as, um, where do I put that? We can write this as the Q by the T, okay? We can write it like that, K, um, K, A, all right, um, delta T, over L like that, okay? We can we can write it like that, okay? Or if you like, um, let me let me correct that and I write it in a different way. We could have written it as D T over D L, as we would have in most books. That is, if we are considering a change in length that is very small and a change in time that is very small, we could have written it like that. Most of the problems that we are going to solve will make use of this one. So I will not bother you with the other one. So I'm going to leave you. Um, we are going to. Um, we are not going to consider this case. All right. So we'll make do with what I have written here. All right. So this is what I want us to do. So let us uh, take a problem. Let me give you a problem on this. A metal plate, uh, how do I write that? Let me see if I can copy it and let me see if I can copy it or type it. Hello. How's the minute? Hello, sir. Yes. I'm listening. Say something now. You are saying hello. Hello. I want to, I'm, I'm trying to um, give you a question, um, uh, an example here. Give me a minute, I want to paste it somewhere here.
All right. So, um, quickly, um, that's a question. Can you see that? Can you see this question here? Can you see it? Can you see it clearly? Yes, sir. Yeah. Please quickly write this down. That's what we want to solve. A metal plate 4.0 mm thick has a temperature difference of this between its faces. It transmits. Well, um, I think I'm going to let us let me let me correct this. This is not kilojoules. Let me correct this. Um, let me remove this. This I am supposed to be kilojoules. Kilojoules. All right, kilojoules per hour through as 200 kilojoules per hour through an area of 200, I mean 5.00 cm squared. Calculate the thermal conductivity of this metal. All right, calculate the thermal conductivity of this metal. Now, what we have been given is the thickness. We've been given the thickness. We've been given the thickness. So you um, recall that um, we've also been given the rate, delta Q. Delta T is given as 400 kilojoules per hour. That's what we are given. What else have we been given? We've been given the area. as 5.00 cm squared. We've been given the thickness. The thickness is what? The L is the thickness there, which is 4.00 mm. We've also been given what? We've been given the change in temperature delta T. Delta T is given as 32. 0 0.0 degrees Celsius. So what we are asked to calculate is K. So you simply have to realize that delta T, sorry, delta Q by delta T. Um, can I take this elsewhere? So, um, I am to write that um, delta T, delta Q by delta T is equal to K, A, delta T, as all over L, like that. So what I am asked to calculate is this K. This K is called the thermal conductivity, as we explained in the previous class which is a property of the material, okay? So all you need to do is do this substitution. Um, you are going to do it like this. You are going to call this the rate. So let my um, delta Q over delta T be the rate R. So that means this is my R. I hope you understand that. So, and um, then I can write this as um, R. L all over, all over what? All over K, uh, sorry, all over A delta T is equal to K by cross multiplication. Does it make sense? That is, I call the this my rate R here. Then if I do like, um, if I do it that way, it means therefore that I am going to cross multiply L with R here and divide through by A and delta T. So I'm going to have R L over A delta T is equal to K. So you do that substitution and let us have the answer. That is how to solve that problem. I hope you can do that substitution. Does it make sense? 
Come Can again, sir. Once more, please. What I'm saying is that if I am writing R, if I let R be equal to delta Q over delta T, okay? Then what I'm going to have is that R is going to be equal to K A delta T all over L. That's what I'm going to have, okay? So by cross multiplication, I'm going to have R L all over A delta, sorry, L delta T, yes. L delta T is going to be equal to K. So this is what we are looking for K. So that is how you are going to, that is how you are going to do it. Can you see what I'm sharing with you? Yes, yes, you can see. Sir. Does it make sense? So this, that is how to answer that question. So please go ahead and substitute that. I'm going to give you yet another one. Let me give you yet another one. Is there anybody that has problem with that? No. Okay. All right. So I'm going to give yet another one. Um, which other one can I give here? That will make it um, easy for you to um, deal with. All right, so I'm going to give this. You are going to do this one, try this one out. Just a minute, I'm going to show you the question. All right, an iron plate 2 cm thick has a cross sectional area 5,000 cm squared. One face is at 150 degrees Celsius and the other is at 140 degrees Celsius. How much heat passes through the plate each second? Now, you have been told that the plate uh, is made of iron, and then um, K for iron has been given as 80 watts per meter. Kelvin. Now, let me suggest how you are going to do that. Is a is direct substitution to solve the problem. This is what you do. This is what you do. Always and always, you write the co um, quantities that you have been given. So the solution. The solution is going to be like this. I hope I can. I have it there. Uh, what is it? Have you written the question? Can I solve it? Can I suggest how it should be solved? Yes, sir. No, yes. the question, sir. Can go on. The question is there. Yes, can sir, you see it? You can see it? Yes, sir. Yes. I want you to start solving it right away. What are we looking for here? I'm looking for time. How much what? We are not looking for time. How much heat? We are looking heat? for the how much heat? Eat. We are looking for the heat. 
We are not looking for the heat. The... What are we looking for? Who can answer that question? We are looking for the quantity, the delta Q. We are not looking for delta Q. No. We are looking for the... Looking Look at the question. Team. How much... Read the question where you have the question mark. Delta T. How much what? The rate it. of quantity of it. Exactly. The rate How much of flow it? of heat. The rate. What we are looking for yeah. is the rate of heat flow. Is it clear now? Okay. Oh. Do you understand it now? Yes, yes sir. Not time, yes, sir. Yes. not quantity, but the rate. So you can see that's how to solve yes. the problem. So oh. you write the quantity. So let us let us attempt um, this. So um, I am trying to let me let me see if I can write this here now. So you have um you have you you have the quantities. These are the quantities you are you are given. The thickness L is given as two cm. All right. The area A is given as five thousand cm squared. Now we are given the temperature difference is going to be delta T is going to be the temperature at one end is one fifty. Then this other one is one forty. All right, degrees. Celsius, so that's the temperature difference. Can you see it there? So how yes, much yes, heat sir. passes through per second? Then we are also given K, all right, which is 80 um, watts per liter per Kelvin, like that. So what we are looking for now is the rate R, which is delta Q over delta T. Can you see it now? Can you solve the problem? This one is direct substitution, isn't it? So we know that the rate is supposed to be simply direct substitution, isn't it? You are going to get what? You are going to get K that has been given A, um, delta T, all over L. So you substitute these quantities and you have the answer. Does it, is it easy to do now? Do you understand what to do now? Hello class, Can, are you following? Do you understand what to do now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, so you put 10 here now because he's going to give 10 degrees Celsius, 10 degrees then Celsius. A, and then you simply substitute the quantities, all right? And then, but you must realize, realize that, you must realize that um, um, 2 cm, 2 cm, big pardon, just let me correct a few things there. 2 cm could also be written as 2 times 10 raised to power minus 2 meters, okay? If you are going to calculate in joules, all right? Okay, so therefore this will be in standard units. So you can also um, convert this. All right, okay. one cm is ten. I mean, rest, ten raised to power minus two meters. Right. So this is going to be five hundred times ten raised to power minus four. Five hundred times ten. So since this is cm squared, so you are going to multiply this by ten to the minus four, as you are going to multiply this by ten to the minus four to have it in meter squared. That's all we are going to do there. So if you do that, you are going to have the result in standard units. All right? So that's, that's all I want to say on that. Any other question on that? So those are the questions. Now, let us quickly um, um, conclude by looking at the other modes of heat transfer. All right. Um, ask your question before we continue.
So, you, you, you explain this story. Quickly now, you are wasting time. You can continue, sir. I've already explained what you wanted, Abby. Yeah, yeah, you can. Okay. So those, those are the, those are the kind of um, examples that anybody should give. We don't expect you to solve problems that are much more difficult than that. Now, the other modes of transfer of heat that you have read about, after conduction, the next one is convection. Now, in the case of convection, you know that the molecules actually undergo translational motion from their mean rest position. In the case of solids, the molecules or atoms do not leave their mean rest position. The molecule, I mean, the atoms in any metal when heat, when they receive heat, will simply vibrate with increased amplitude about the mean, mean rest position. But um, certainly they are not going to leave the mean rest position and undergo some uh, level of translational motion. Okay, so that's the difference. But in the case of um, um, liquids and gases, that's in fluids, molecules can actually leave where they are and move to other parts or parts of the volume, if you like, of the material. This kind of mode of transfer is called convection. Convection is transfer of heat by molecular motion, which involves translation of the molecules from place to place in any material, okay? Or in fluids in particular, because it's not going to be in solids, all right? Fluids here mean Sol, I mean, um, liquids and gases. So convection occurs in liquids and gases, not in solids. Um, okay, the last one is radiation. Okay, I hope you have read all of these. Is I'm I'm simply summarizing what you have in your course material there. Okay. Now, in the case of radiation, you studied um these um principle. Of course, before I even talk about the um, radiation, let us look at the applications of um, the convection that you know before we talk about radiation. How can you explain um, the atmospheric circulation of land and sea breezes? How can you explain that? Who can take that on? Aminu Lawa. Land and sea breezes. Aminu Lawa, I'll talk now. Yeah, the question again, please. Can you come again, sir? Yeah, we said that I'm talking about the application of convection. Okay? And we said that convection is the main mode of transfer in fluids that's liquid or gases. Now, I am giving you an example. An example of convectional motion is the atmospheric circulation that occurs in the morning, in the evening. One is called the land breeze and the other one is called the sea breeze. It's something that you have done in your um, SSC. Can you explain that briefly? You cannot, I mean, all right, okay. So I'm going to ask you, Balogu, um, um, Balogu Benga, by what mode of transfer do we have ocean currents? What mode of transfer? By what mode of transfer do we have ocean currents? That convection, convection. Now, okay, by convection. Now, can you explain these? in terms of the motion of currents between the North Pole and the South Pole. I mean, the North Pole and Equator. The North Pole and Equator on the surface of the Earth. No idea, sir. No, you must have an idea because you just said it's a convection. Now, 
you see, this is why this is why it's difficult to teach in your class. You come into a university class with no idea of anything. Now, convection, most of you will eventually be those that walk ocean liners. You can never know where you are going to walk. Some of you may turn I'm, I'm turn around to be, I mean, you may later on become captains of ships. Or if you don't have dreams, I, I, I think you begin to think about them. Now, you don't have dreams. Now, the, the, those oceans that you are seeing, those pilots that you are seeing that fly you from place to place, have to have idea of the things that we are discussing now. It is with these things that they can plan. They know the direction of flow, when to expect the direction of flow of air from one side to the other. So they, they will take this into the, the, uh, into consideration. Then there are, there are those that are now um, uh, uh, um, sailing ships into the other have to know about ocean currents. Now the question is this, what do you expect in terms of the movement of water, in terms of movement of water between the North Pole and the South Pole, all right? At the surface, at the surface of the sea, what should you expect? Please. You see, you see now why you have been telling my own question because you think that I will come and ask you what is convection, what is radiation, what is uh, a conduction. I don't ask that kind of question. I ask questions based on the the happening of things around you. Who can explain that? Who can explain that? Children, children of Nigeria, who can explain that? I do I Aminu, Aminu Awan, yes. No, not tidal waves. Okay, now let me give you an idea. You see, right. where do you expect the, um, uh, between equator and the pole, which one, which side is hotter? Equator. The equator is, is warm, equator. Yes. Why? Yes. Why? Because it is located uh, along the mid region of between the north and south pole. <laughs> okay. You see, you you, you are now under you are undergraduates now, and some of you very soon you will become politicians and you sit on TV and begin to talk what you don't understand. <laughs> you can see now. Now the sun is almost. Um, overhead at the equator, let us assume, isn't it? So the sun, right? If you look at, uh, if you yes. look at it closely, you notice that the sun is almost, at, uh, I mean, overhead at the equator. All right? Then it is that. So in other words, more heat. Let okay. me put it simply. More heat of the sun comes to equator than uh, you have at the poles. Is that correct? Than the pole. That's why when you travel oh, to Britain, okay. yes, you have yes, to if you are traveling to Greenland. You have to wear a thicker um, materials, isn't it? Yes, sir. Now, from the definition yes, of it, heat flows from the region of hot to cold temperature, isn't it? Yes, sir. So I should ex expect yes, in normal circumstances that water, um, um, or cold water, I mean, a hot water from the equatorial region yes. should move at the surface to um, the pole, isn't it? Yes, sir. How yes. about at the bottom of the sea? What would you expect? It should cool. It should be cold. It should be cool. At the bottom, we should expect that you see, when you go as you go from the surface, all right, further yes. down, you should expect that the temperature should change. So you have yes. cold water, all right? Isn't it? Yes, so, sir. When, so what yes. happens is that when the warm water now flows to the pole, as it becomes cold there, it, it becomes heavier or denser, that's the word, that's, it becomes denser. I, yes. mean, that's, I think that's the correct word. Yes. It becomes denser, isn't it? And therefore mm. sinks, isn't yes. it? So when yes. it sinks now, then it becomes, that's the cold water now, must now flow back to equator, isn't it? So you yes. have at the surface, warm yes. from equator to the pole, from pole yes. you have cold water flowing cold. towards yes. equator. So that's why it yes. is a circulation. It is, all right? That's why we call it yes. circulation. It's a circulation. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Does it make sense? So this is this is the kind of thing. It does, yes, sir. And this is the kind of things that happens. Then the other one that I asked that you were unable to explain is that is, is the land, sir? 
Yes. 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 Now, um, I was trying to explain the other one too. That's the land and the sea breeze. Okay. I want us to explain that. The sea breeze is, of course, you have it in your course material. Didn't you see it there? Hello, sir. I'm in the class, please. So, um, did you see it in your course material? Yeah, let's try it. <coughs> Excuse me. Did you see it in your course material? You saw it there, isn't it? It's there. All right. Land and sea breeze. It's illustrated. It's in your course material. I've seen it myself there. Okay, this is what I want you to explain. Land breeze is likely to occur when? Land breeze is the flow of air from the land towards the sea. Why sea breeze yes. is the flow of air from sea towards the land? But they occur at different times of the day and night. I hope you know that. From your course, yes, you, not, you will not be able to cover the material. You see, I am not coming to teach in, in details all those things that you have. I'm only coming to facilitate, to allow you to be able to see, um, um, to, to solve the problems that you have there and have a better understanding of what you have read. So now what happens, what the question I'm asking now is this. When, um, when do you usually expect to have the land breeze? That's flow of air from land towards the sea. When? On a 24-hour day. When? Adebuyi. Pardon me if I don't pronounce your name correctly. I know Balogun Benga. Olajide. Eletu. I can see some names there. Adeni Yadeshino. Enoy them, Emmanuel. Who can answer that? Yes, Olajide, try it out. Possibly at night, sir. When yeah. the sun is down, when the heat content is down, sir. Uh, possibly um, um, in, the, in, in the morning, late, uh, that's late night and early morning. Late night. Oh, early morning. Yes, late night know. and early morning. I, that's correct, isn't it? Okay. Yes, that's um well let no, us say in the morning. Okay. Now those of us that live um from the riverland area that you people have taken over, you the rest of Nigerians, all right. We sell out using this land breeze to the open sea to go and fish. Okay. Then later in the day, okay, in the late okay. afternoon, then you begin to have sea breeze. Can you explain why this should be like that, Olaji Day? So you have given the correct answer. We expect the land breeze early, um, early in the morning, at night. At night. Yes, at late, um, late, um, late, uh, late night or early morning. Yes. So to say. Yes. The other one in the afternoon or evening, isn't it? Yes, sir. Right. sir. Yes, that is the the sea breeze. Then the mm -hmm. question is, why should it be like that? Well, I did attempt it. Ah, uh, because. Of uh, because of the latent heat uh, generated from uh, what's it called now? Oh. So, uh, no, uh, Olajide, Olajide, we are not talking about latent heat. We are talking about oh, I told, transfer uh, I of said, heat. Uh, I mean, because the, is, is the, the song will heat up the land surfaces. No, wait, let Olajide finish first. I, I, I want us to get the idea properly. Okay, Olajide, go ahead. It's not latent heat. Yeah, Don't yes, use sir. the word latent heat. Yes, yeah, sorry, sir. I'm trying to say the uh, heat emitted at that time is lower. No, it's not about the emission of heat, Olajide. Olajide, what, what I, I want you to use is the mode of transfer of heat, which is convection. So, and we have said that convection. Convection. Yes. Convection. Yeah. Convection. Yes, that's the that's yeah. term across. Yes, convection is the flow. Is the flow that passes. That's we are talking it, about flow of atmospheric mass now. That's A, isn't it? Night, early morning. What are the afternoon? 
Boleh tak tolong? Tak. Is there anybody that can uh, add to what Lajide just said? Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, say, uh, okay, let's have it. Now, I'm really jolly, of course, at night, because during the day, the sun will hit the land surface, but only to a depth of a few inches. I think Olajide had an idea. Um, uh, that's why he tried to um, uh, bring in the concept of the latent heat, isn't it? Um, yes, sir. But then, yes, he, he brought in the concept. Now, now let, let me help us so that we save time. You see, now, during the, uh, during the, during the um, uh, night, like he rightly suggested, Olajide suggested, okay? Right. The rocks of the eight which have much less heat capacity, if I must borrow from his concept. So it was not altogether wrong. So you, you were even right to have um, um, bacon on the concept of um, latent, I mean, um, um, let, no, not uh, latent, um, heat capacity, not latent heat, heat capacity. Yes, yes, sir. yes heat capacity. So because um, the, the rock of the air has much less capacity to store heat than um, sea water than water. Do you understand it now? So if you go and yes, take sir. a look at um, the the table of um, heat capacity, you notice that water has much more um, um, a capacity to store heat than than the rock of the earth, than metals, yes. than solids, other solids like that. Yes. Okay. So the consequence is this. The rock of the earth will readily lose heat when the sun goes up at night, isn't it? So yes, because sir. it does not have the capacity to hold heat for too long, so it's going to lose the heat. Okay? All right? So mm -hmm. when it loses mm -hmm. the heat, all right? Mm -hmm. So it means the surface of the earth will um, become cold, isn't it? And yes, the heat sir. is lost to the upper part of the atmosphere. So in other words, the upper part is um, warmer while the surface is cooler. But now, you have at the sea, that's at the other end here at the sea. Now, sea, the sea water has um, greater um, heat capacity, isn't it? So it is going to be warm. Okay. okay. In fact, those of us that have been in the ocean, if, if you if you if you are if you are cold at night or when it's raining, the only way to keep warm is to even scoop the water and you are safe to look as water that has been boiled on the stove. All right, to be warm. So because of that, then the air on the surface of the sea will expand, isn't it? And then yeah. it will now move, as it will rise and move into, I mean, towards to fill the gap that is being created. You notice that the loss of the heat on the surface at the land here now will cause, tend to create space for the warm air from the sea to move in. Okay. Do you understand it now? Yes, sir. Yes, it's making sense, sir. That is um okay. Let let's let's look at it. What well, I, I I hope I've, I've gotten it right. Let let me even uh, take a look at what I've said. I'm saying that the air is going to move from land to sea. Yeah, so it's going to move from land to sea. Okay. So now what really happens is that the 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 sea, which is um warmer now, is going to. Uh, have the air on the on the surface expand, isn't it, and create space there, isn't it? So the cold air now on the on the land here is not now going to move into um, fill the space that has been created because nature abhors a vacuum. Now in the afternoon, okay. Now what happens is the opposite. The opposite is that the land becomes hotter because it it has much less heat capacity, so it becomes hotter faster than the sea. So the air near the surface of um, the, the near the surface expands and creates space. Then the air from the sea, which is much cooler, now moves in, okay, towards the the land. Do you understand it now? At night, the sea is warmer. The surface of the uh, the the continent cooler, all right? So. Now the air on the surface of the sea expands and rises and creates a vacuum, an apparent vacuum, if you like, not a vacuum anyway, and rises and creates and creates space. So now the air from the land moves in, that sea breeze, I mean land breeze, and that occurs early in the morning. 
now in the afternoon and late evening or um, early evening, if you like, then the land, which is much hotter now, the air there expands and rises, creates space. The air from the surface of the sea moves in. That is sea breeze. Now, go back and read this. You will be able to see that it, on the average, that is exactly what you have. You should be able to explain these concepts, okay, if anybody asks. Now, the other one um, that we have not touched on is called radiation. So what do you understand by radiation? So there are three types now. It will be complete. Let me write all of them so that you will see. Let me write all of them now um, that we have discussed. So you have, we have talked about conduction. Now this occurs in solids. We have talked about convection. This occurs in fluids. Now fluids, this is um, A. And um, uh, let me put it this way, um, gas. And um, that is in gas and liquid. All right. Okay. Now the other one is called radiation. So, what mode of transfer? Tell, let somebody explain this one. Now, these two. We talked about the material media, that we needed material media. These two require material media. Do you understand what I mean there? Both convection and conduction require material media for the propagation, for there to be you know, transfer of heat, but radiation now does not require any material medium. So this occurs in a vacuum. This one occurs in a vacuum. I, I don't think I have enough space. Let me let me see. Let me write it. Um, let me choose um, sufficient space there. Allow me to write it elsewhere, please, so that you see what I'm trying to talk about. I want to write everything out there. I said conduction. Convection and then radiation. Now, these two require material media, isn't it? Material media that is solid solid or conduction and um, liquid or fluids, isn't it? But this one does not require any material medium. So it can propagate through the vacuum, can propagate through the vacuum. So heat can propagate through the vacuum by radiation, whereas heat can propagate through the liquid by convection, can also propagate through a gas by convection. It propagates through a solid like metal by conduction. That's what I'm saying. But it propagates through an empty space by radiation. Does it make sense? Do you understand me now? Do you understand what I've explained there? Yes, sir. Does it make sense to you? Yeah, that is it. So now, you have also um, um, looked at the, uh, the the law of radiation there. That that is um, um, Planck's uh, Planck's law. I think I think it's Planck's law or something. Let me let's look at it. The what you have in your course material. I'm going to write one here. Um, radiation. We've said 
is the mode of transportation through a vacuum. And then um, um, I think the, the most important law that you have to learn, I think is in your, con in your, um, in your course material is um, Stefan Boltzmann's law. I think that's the one. Stefan Stephan yes, yes, Boltzmann's yes. Yeah, law. I think you've seen that. Yes. Do you have it in your course material? Yes, so sir. it's going to be like this. Um, let me let me write it out, and then let me write it out on a blank um, space before I share it. Let me write it out on a blank pen. So it's going to be something like this. Give me a minute, and I'm going to show it to you.
ครับผมอร่อยไอไอทิ้งกัมอายาสูเชะพลีสดิสคอนอายาโอเชสเซพลีสดิสคอนเน็ตยูอาเซฟอามีชอตยูอาเซฟยูอาเทคโนบาร์เดคอนโทรลโซดาดาคันคอนติเนียอายาสูอูเชะอีซีดัสว่าฮัปเปนซ่าสุนัสเดทิงกูสอบวันออฟเดม Yes. No, the thing just went off. Uh, yes, I, 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 which I did now. So, can you all hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can hear you now. Yes, sir. We can hear you now. Anya, Anya, so she was actually taking over the hosting. The the system went off now, so uh, you know poor connectivity in Nigeria. It's not my it's, it's not really my fault. Okay, so and uh, and I think we have taken much longer than um, necessary. So I was just trying to explain to us um the Stefan uh, Stefan Bosman's um radiation law. Okay, at um and, and then you have also studied what we call the black body radiation. A black body radiation is any um object if you like. Which absorbs all heat. I mean, all radiation that falls on it, and is also um, able to emit all radiation. <laughs> In other words, a, a good absorber. I mean, um, is also a good radiator, right? So now you know that um, um, the black body uh, is approximated to a spherical object with a tiny entrance, into which all radiation that passes into it will reflect internally and be trapped inside so that um uh, so that um all the radiation that comes in um is taken inside there but then if we also heat the uh, the substance i mean if we if we heat it the object then we we'll also emit uh, expect it to emit that radiation back okay do you understand it now so you have that in your course material now how much heat is going to be radiated is um what i uh, is given by what i um i wrote there now um, the host disabled part, part, uh, participants screen. so somebody else has taken over the uh, hosting so i think i should end because i'm supposed to be the host so I'm, i think i'm going to end the class i have disabled everything yes i i did that so but once yes but once the thing goes off and then you are trying to rejoin you see most of them that's what they do so uh, um so i think i will have to stop here i will record what is left because i don't have the control anymore i can't see the controls anymore like this one the the, the major controls that i'm supposed to use here they're not here please who is aziz the pen should log out now and let uh, our lecturer be the host so I think um, we'll pack up at this point. Um, I, I will try and record what is left and I will send it to you. It's unfortunate that the thing went off. I am going to record it. I will do some calculations and then um, maybe we should meet again. Um, I don't know. Um, can you reschedule this class? Balo Gumbenga. Yes, sir. Yes. Um, can we can we reschedule and uh, can we have um, one more class? No problem, sir. It's okay, sir. Yes, no when? problem. It's okay, sir. It's going to be on Friday. It'll be on Friday in the evening. Okay. Okay. What time, sir? That's what I'm trying to say. Is is it should be in the evening before? I think it should be. It should be by. Where will I be then? No, I think no. It's not going to be convenient. I, I would have traveled um, to uh, to one of these practicals. Uh, so when when are we going to do that? I've already scheduled a class, additional class for uh, classical mechanics for tomorrow. And is um, Thursday possible, sir? Huh? Thursday is Thursday, it possible, sir? On Thursday and on Friday, I will be on the road throughout. Okay. 
All right. So maybe we'll take addi one additional class uh, next week when we meet next week. But what I'm going All to right, do is sir. that I'm going to record um, most of these, um, most of what I'm supposed to have done by way of calculations. I'm going to do calculations on all these concepts and send them to you. I think that way we'll be able okay, to come as much as possible. Yes, sir. I'm sorry that okay, they, sir. Um, they think okay, kept, sir. Um, okay, sir. Yeah. All right. So let us. Um, okay, end thank you, sir. All right. Hello, thank sir. you, sir. Yes. Hello, sir. Hello, sir.